Welcome to episode two of the True Crime Review podcast. It's September 1st, 2016. Um, and I just want to warn everyone that uh, this podcast is frequently going to discuss uh, issues and details of uh, murder, sexual assault, and other possibly disturbing topics. So uh, listener discretion is advised. Um, we're going to start off today with uh, a piece of human garbage known as Gizar Ziangarif, a uh, 39-year-old, uh, whose uh, victim's mother uh, wants the death penalty brought back in Russia uh, for this guy. Uh, he uh, is a father of three and uh, recently out of prison for the rape of uh, two females. Uh, he managed to rape uh, four women in one week and uh, later told police that he felt he had done nothing wrong to the victims and that they should be grateful to him. Um, this, again, piece of human garbage is uh, a serial rapist and had already served five years, as I said, for raping a neighbor and an underage girl when he began attacking women uh, once again more recently. Um, one woman who he assaulted with a, uh, sexually assaulted with a broken tree branch, uh, a 31-year-old woman suffered a heart attack and went into a coma. And almost a year later, she remains in hospital and is... Um, traumatized to the point that she's unable to speak or to move, and she's also having difficulty keeping weight on. Um, so he's he's clearly you know ruined this woman's this woman's life, and her mother says that it's uh, uh, it's probably a good time to bring back the death penalty in Russia, and I think that she's right. Um, you know that's that's our human garbage. Uh, for the day. Our next story um, involves a uh, Penn State professor who was uh, allegedly pushed uh, from a uh, quarry, a mining quarry, 80 feet uh, to his death and possibly actually remained alive for at least a couple of days, uh, maybe immobile and maybe unconscious, uh, but, but, uh, alive. Um, and, you know, and so he, he probably died over several days. Um, apparently he was, um, his murder was, uh, perpetrated by a male and a female who are uncle and niece to one another and who are also apparently romantically involved. Um, apparently our victim, uh, who is, uh, Professor Ronald Bedig, uh, had taken issue with how, um, how, so apparently, um, Bedig, uh, the victim, had befriended um, the woman and the man months before his death. The woman had been living with him with her child um, at the beginning of the year, and uh, the victim and the woman may or may not have been romantically involved, uh, but it seems pretty clear um, that the woman and the male perpetrator, uh, who is her uncle, uh, were romantically involved. Uh, so there was apparently some, uh, some, uh, jealousy, some resentment over being, uh, criticized for how she was raising her child. And apparently, uh, the uncle and the niece thought that they stood somehow to inherit some money, uh, from the professor. Um, so, you know, again, this is, this is certainly human scum, but also just a, a notable story in that it's a very, sort of a heartbreaking way um, to die, uh, you know, uh, certainly uh, to be out with people you consider friends and then to find yourself um, 
you know, pushed from a, an 80 foot ledge is just, uh, you know, it's terrifying. Um, that is our second story uh, for the day. So, Professor Ronald Bedig um, is the victim there. We want to try and focus always on the victims uh, when we can. Um, just because, you know, the perpetrators get far too much, far too much attention in uh, most media. Our last story of the day is probably our most disturbing and the strangest. Um, an Oklahoma woman accused of killing her daughter uh, told police that she beat her and repeatedly forced a crucifix down her throat because she feared that her daughter was possessed by Satan. Uh, so this uh, perpetrator is Juanita Gomez, uh, 49-year-old from Oklahoma City, who's been charged uh, with murdering her daughter, Geneva, who was you know, 33 at the time uh, she was murdered. And I'm going to read a little bit from the uh, affidavit of probable cause, which um, which is a document that typically is... Uh, filed by law enforcement with uh, the court, uh, usually via the district attorney's office, uh, that basically lays out the uh, uh, the information that supports bringing charges you know, against uh, a perpetrator. So we're going to have a look at this one. This says, on August 27, 2016, officers of the Oklahoma City PD uh, were called uh, to McKinley Avenue. Um, they were performing a welfare check on an adult female. Uh, when they arrived, they found the victim, Geneva Gomez, lying in the home with a large cross uh, crucifix upon her chest. Now, blood was visible, and she had suffered severe trauma around her head and face. The emergency responders arrived and pronounced Geneva deceased. Officers came into contact with the victim's mother, Juanita Gomez. She stated her daughter was possessed by the devil. Uncontacted by officers, Juanita Gomez had several bruises, to include swelling around the knuckles area on both hands. She was brought to the homicide office and interviewed. She waived her Miranda rights and admitted to believing her daughter was possessed by the devil approximately a day or so ago. Juanita stated she punched her daughter repeatedly and forced a crucifix and religious medallion down her throat until blood came out of her daughter's mouth. Juanita saw her daughter die and then placed her body in the shape of a cross. Afterward, Juanita attempted to clean her daughter and the other items in the home. When interviewed, Juanita had swollen hands and several bruises on her arms. She stated these bruises were from her daughter fighting her attempts to rid Satan from her daughter's body. Investigator Doug Hurst wrote that, uh, again, uh, that was uh, an account of considering the, um, the use of the religious items and uh, the uh, suspect's statements about her daughter, uh, Geneva, being possessed by Satan. Uh, I, and not to mention waiving her Miranda rights, it wouldn't surprise me. If um, if we didn't see see a um, a uh, an insanity defense uh, from uh, this woman's attorney, so this is a case that we'll be watching. This has been episode two of the True Crime Review podcast. Um, you can find us at truecrimereview.net. You can find the podcast on audioboom.com/slash True Crime Review. Uh, soon enough, you'll be able to find us on iTunes as well. If you use Twitter, we're True Crime Rev, R-E-V. Uh, if you're on Facebook, we use, uh, you can find us at facebook.com slash true crime review. And finally, if you use Reddit, you can find us at r slash true crime review. Uh, I'm still not sure how frequently we're going to post episodes, um, but you can probably expect another one in the next few days. Uh, again, thanks a lot for listening, and this has been True Crime Review.